So let's say there's a young man or a young woman and she's seen this one man and that's it. That's the guy for me. He has won my heart and they are stuck on this one person. They don't want to let go. And as you said, you know, they, they can't let go of, they're looking over the, the person's bad habits. They're just looking over it because they're so infatuated and kind of, they feel like they've fallen in love with this person. What advice could you give to someone in that situation? A young person in that situation? Not everyone you're impressed with initially is actually the ideal spouse. Yeah. They might be good at the uni, university or wherever else. They might be good at the workplace. But if you were to visit their home and see how they lived and meet their folks and their broader family, you would definitely wash your hands off uh, the ideas that you might be developing in your mind. I'm not saying they're not a good person. But the environment is such, you know, I have within my own home, sometimes comments fly that, you know, ha had this person known uh, how you live, perhaps how difficult it is to, to, to live with you, they would have never shown an interest in you. You know, you have comments flying around in the extended home. And so it is quite true that someone, sometimes we meet them at a common place where everything in that particular place is connected to a certain topic that, that is of concern to both of us. So for us, it seems so good, mashallah. Wait, you haven't seen the real, the real them. You know, when they're uh, not made up, number one, when they're just get up early in the morning, when how they, how, for example, how disinterested they might be in cleaning up after themselves and so many factors. So I think from the initial stage, I've said it, I'm repeating it. Don't donate. I'm using the word donate because people give donations, you know. Don't donate your heart or your mind to someone until you really, really have answered a few questions. And one of them would be, it needs to be kept within the framework of Allah, yes. subhanahu wa ta'ala's pleasure, and then involve your folks. And then at the third level, you would want to actually take it a step further. And I want to raise one very interesting point that's come to mind, if you don't mind. No, of course. There is shaitan. Shaitan beautifies things that are haram. You need to know this. And what does he use? He uses halal bait. You know when you go fishing? In Africa, we fish a lot, mashallah. We actually go, I'm talking of real fish. Come on, guys. So <laughs> what we do is we get the best bait, right? And we have a rod and we cast. It's in, mashallah. And you have fish. What do they do? They see, they see a worm. They see the bait. They are confused. They bite. What was our intention? To catch. Shaitan uses the same plot with us. So it looks like food, it looks like something good. Once you bite, you're caught. And then they bring you in, they rope you in slowly but surely, and you come up and suddenly that's the fish. As you get out of the water, what happens? You die. Subhanallah. So this is what happens to us. So it starts in a haram way. You see, for example, a brother, a sister. Mashallah, good, really good. Hijab, excellent, alhamdulillah. Salah, beautiful, mashallah. You know, everything's in order. Wow, soft spoken, very helpful, mashallah. Up to that point, alhamdulillah, good. Subhanallah. You know, whenever I say mashallah, there's a WhatsApp clip someone sent to me of a guy who keeps saying, mashallah brother, have you seen that WhatsApp clip? I think some of you have, right? <laughs> keeps coming to my head and I think, mashallah brother, subhanallah. <laughs> Sorry for, for, for just adding that. I thought it would be a bit of flavor for those of you who might know it. So, so the point I'm raising is you say mashallah, you're excited and so on. And then, you know, you exchange numbers or somehow you get into contact with the person and guess what shaitan does? Shaitan makes this guy get you up for Salatul Fajr. So he messages you early in the morning, five o'clock, beep, beep. Get up for Fajr. Wow, come on. I've known of a case where they turn on the live videos to prove that I'm reading Salatul Fajr. Wow, subhanallah. And you feel so good, Masha. You did the Salah for the sake of Allah. I'm not saying no, but... The guy woke you up, number one. Number two is oh, after a time he starts telling you, you know what? You need to give up your bad habits and you need, and you tell him and each one of you, you've helped yourself improve perhaps from a religious perspective. That was in a way a good thing. But the fact that it happened such that you're now donating your heart before you've involved your folks. And your, your argument is, but this person brings me closer to Allah. And then you bite. And what happens? Your life is gone. 
Subhanallah, you've drawn in, you've pulled in and you've taken out of the water. Perhaps you might start zina and you don't even know. And then you will tell yourself, but Allah is Ghafoorul Rahim. Didn't you hear the lecture we heard the other day? Not going to do it again, inshallah. And the following day, okay, let's get up for tahajjud now. We do tawbah, subhanallah. Now, if you notice on one hand, it's a good thing to be reminded about doing a good thing and you feel like you've improved as a Muslim. But because you gave your heart away, that was shaitan's plan. So that's why Allah tells us involve a third party and make sure that the person doesn't abuse or use intentionally or unintentionally. Sometimes it's unintentional. I do know you have a genuine relationship. You really believe someone's good. They've helped you with your project. They might have helped you at school. We're being realistic here. And you start developing feelings. You need to watch out. At that stage, you're still in control. People say, but I, 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 I'm not in control of my feelings. Initially, you are. Let's not lie. Initially, you are. But it's how you allow it to go further that would actually make you enslaved by those feelings. So we need to know that. It was just an example I gave that sometimes shaitan does use a trap. Be careful of these traps. Like I say, while it's good to encourage one another to become better Muslimin, but don't ever let that make you come out of the water itself. And then, you know, you've committed something that's major. May Allah forgive one and all. Amen.